Yeah. Goes all the way to Washington, D.C., huh? Goes all the way to Washington, D.C. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you Homeland Security? No. Yeah. How far have you taken this down to, uh, how, how far have you actually r ran a load? Uh, I mean, 100 miles? Up to Maine? Up to Maine? No shit. How many miles do you think that is? Man, that's unbelievable. Not to mention, I heard uh, there's one that goes all the way to Colorado, right? Unbelievable. What do you think you're hauling? Any idea? Crap. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Crap makes all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's been a lot of military stuff being hauled around lately, that's for sure, huh? Yeah. We deliver to the military. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate. I heard this water supply, food supply, everything's in there. Yeah, unbelievable. No. Peace, brother. I mean, basically. We got an underground road roadway system here that that runs all the way to Maine, to Washington D.C., to Colorado. It's fully stocked. Uh, it runs completely underground, um, and you can see they've been hauling tons of military equipment. Um, you know they're stocking all these bases now. The other thing is the railroad system here. shipping here and they can really deliver to all these locations which uh, these locations go all the way to area 51 these locations go all the way to Washington DC there's access underneath the White House to this location okay so this is a strategic location which is really the new command center for the Illuminati and the United States government. Well, forget the United States government. This is a headquarters for the Illuminati. This is where they'll ship most of their supplies. When they go underground, they can stay underground for quite some time. And this is stocked with food, water, everything they need. It's an underground city. So uh, this is the north entrance, and uh, we're gonna go see if we can do some more digging. Well, it would seem some very strange happenings are going on. Uh, first, I remind you to go back in history and remember Donald Rumsfeld's comment uh, the day before the attack on, uh, of 9-11, where he said that the Pentagon had lost uh, $2.3 trillion, and then just fortunately, then uh, the Pentagon was destroyed the next day on 9-11-2001. Well, I believe a lot of that money went to go to spending for uh, certain operations for the CIA, FEMA, Homeland Security, and a lot of that was uh, building uh, underground military complex. Fast forward to uh, August of this year, if you remember that D.C. that happened, uh, Virginia, Washington, D.C., and also in Colorado, it, there's evidence pointing to that not being an earthquake as as much as it was probably a nuclear explosion done by the good guys, the black ops uh, military who found out about the, the 
the evil plans of the globalists that were planning on killing off a huge percentage of the population and uh, going and running and hiding in the military underground complex. So what they've done is cut off uh, some escape routes during that time. And the reason I say it was probably uh, nuclear as opposed to an earthquake is the seismographs show that there were no primary waves associated with these two explosions. Uh, and they were very shallow. And also uh, in an area that doesn't receive many earthquakes. Now, <clears throat> The latest report that I'm getting is uh, uh, long about September 20th, 21st, 22nd of this year, there were at least 13 very powerful underground explosions uh, rocking the United States Midwest and uh, they registered a sm small shallow earthquake with the USGS. Many of the underground high explosive detonations registered as 2.6 magnitude earthquakes. So what they're saying is the U.S. military is sealing off the tunnels so that the globalists and the U.S. ghost government, i.e. the Federal Reserve Bankers, FEMA, the DHS, CIA, they can't run and hide from what they're predicting to occur here long about September 27th, give or take a day or two of this year, here just real soon. Officers and the U.S. military didn't seem to be aware of uh, Obama and the globalist plan converging on Denver for a DEFCON 1 meeting, uh, meaning nuclear war imminent, a cocked pistol drill. Email was sent to the U.S. Air Force Office of Special Investigations on September 21st of 2011 to alert them to a planned false flag nuclear detonation on U.S. soil somewhere in the American Midwest. The U.S. Air Force Office of Special Investigations were the ones who raided the Citadel gun and safe store in Las Vegas on August 21st to recover stolen nuclear warhead detonators. They were the ones who intercepted the transfer of improvised nuclear warheads by the CIA in the tunnels that connected the deep underground military bases on August 23, 2011. The impoverished nuclear bombs, the W-54 style warheads, uh, they were being transferred via those tunnels to Washington, D.C. and New York City when they detonate, detonated during a firefight between U.S. military personnel and the criminal CIA, DHS, FEMA operatives. It would appear that the U.S. military had a deadline to meet and has already damaged, destroyed, or sealed at least 13 underground tunnels or bases, and perhaps their incentive was the fact that Obama, his shadow government, and the globalists had made plans to save their own hides while leaving the rest of us to fend for ourselves. Perhaps they investigated and confirmed that another false flag nuclear detonation was imminent and acted accordingly to prevent it. The following video details the contents of a Department of Defense document entitled Internment and Resettlement Operations, also known as FM 3-39.40. The document is 325 pages long and it is signed by Joyce E. Morrow, Administrative Assistant to the Secretary of the Army. It was created in 2010, however, it has just been recently leaked to the public via the internet and can now be downloaded from multiple sources. In the description below, you'll find a download link for the document. I strongly encourage you to download it yourself and to verify everything that's being said here. The document outlines military procedures for internment and resettlement of civilians, and it describes the layout and the administration of these internment camps. It clearly states on page 38 that it applies within U.S. territory, and it specifically addresses the detainment of U.S. citizens, as is indicated by the identification procedures for new prisoners on page 146, which states that social security numbers are to be recorded alongside their photograph and fingerprints. Included in the list of organizations which may be involved in these internment operations are the Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, the Department of Defense, and the United Nations. On page 56, the document outlines the responsibilities of psychological operations officers within the camps, among which it states that a PSYOP officer develops and executes indoctrination programs to reduce or remove antagonistic attitudes and identifies political activists. On page 281, the document goes into more detail regarding the role of psychological operations within the camps, specifically in regards to pacifying the population and ensuring cooperation. 
On page 238, it gives the conditions for the use of deadly force in such camps. Among the justifications for lethal force, it includes to terminate an active escape attempt. That point right there should make it clear that these camps are not benevolent disaster relief type facilities. On page 244, the document calls for the use of snipers during riots to, quote, scan a crowd and identify agitators and riot leaders for apprehension and fire lethal rounds if warranted. On page 260, it shows the basic layout for a facility focusing on detainment. It is depicted with interrogation areas, tribunal areas, and mortuaries. Each detainment facility is designed to hold 4,000 prisoners, and they are depicted with multiple levels of barbed wire separating compartments within the facilities, with a double barbed wire fence enclosing them, and watched over by 24 guard towers. On page 261, the document depicts the layout for what they call civilian resettlement facilities, which are designed to house 8,000 people. Though it uses the word resettlement, the plans show multiple levels of barbed wire dividing the sections of the facility, with double barbed wire fencing on the outside, as well as 16 guard towers. On page 262, the layout for facilities designed for what they call non-compliant prisoners is shown. These camps are designed to hold up to 300 prisoners, they have three interrogation centers, and are guarded by 13 guard towers. Now, if there's any question whether these plans are active or just theoretical, this should be settled by the fact that the U.S. Army has been running ads for job positions in these camps since 2009, and apparently, they're still hiring. Once again, if you look in the description, you'll find all the links you need to verify this information. It's important to note here that this document was created in 2010, which was under the Obama administration, and it predates the NDAA of 2012, which authorized military detainment of U.S. citizens. This clearly shows a long-term agenda at work. If you believe that this is important information for people to know about, then please share this video with as many people as you can. Share it on Facebook and on Twitter. Send it in emails to friends and family. Especially send it to anyone you know within the police and military. A smart strategy would be to download the PDF yourself and email it to people as an attachment with a link to this video so that they know how to navigate the document. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering, on YouTube. For bonus content, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website, stormcloudsgathering.com. miles Maine. up to Maine no shit how many miles do you think that is man that's unbelievable not to mention I heard uh, there's one that goes all the way to Colorado right unbelievable what do you think you're hauling any idea yeah okay yeah Goes all the way to Washington, D.C., huh? Goes all the way to Washington, D.C. I don't know. Yeah, you Homeland Security? No. Yeah. How far have you taken this down to, uh, how, how far have you actually ran a load? Yeah. Yeah. I know there's been a lot of military stuff being hauled around lately, that's for sure, huh? We deliver to the military. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Well, I appreciate I heard this water supply, food supply, everything's in there. Yeah, unbelievable. No. Peace, brother. Basically, you got an underground road roadway system here that that runs all the way to Maine, to Washington D.C., to Colorado. It's fully stocked. Uh, it runs completely underground. Um, 